The cars are mirrors. A flicker of light caught the edge of a metallic spiral as researchers in the Arctic settlement of Dixon stepped back from the contraption. It was Christmas Eve, 1990, and the air was already heavy with anticipation. Inside the reflective aluminum structure, known as a Kozarev mirror, volunteers reported strange sensations, floating, timelessness, and a heightened sense of intuition. Outside, something even stranger was taking place. Aurora-like lights danced over the building, and witnesses swore they saw a disc-shaped object streak across the sky, leaving behind a fading trail. Named after the astrophysicist Nikolai Kozarev, these mirrors weren't reflective in a conventional sense. Instead, they were designed to manipulate what Kozarev called energy time, invisible flows of information thought to connect to every moment in history. Though he didn't invent the devices, Kozarev's theories inspired their creation by Soviet researchers in Novosibirsk. Kozarev theorized that certain materials, particularly aluminum, could focus and amplify these flows of energy time. Constructed from spiraled sheets of aluminum, these mirrors could house a single person in their reflective core, isolating them from external interference and amplifying internal phenomena. Positioned above the 73rd parallel north, Dixon was chosen for its unique geomagnetic properties, thought to be a gateway to anomalies in time density. The initial experiments produced unsettling results. Participants reported vivid visual patterns, sensations of leaving their bodies, and even glimpses of historical or ancestral scenes. But it wasn't just subjective experiences that excited the scientists. Data from later large-scale trials revealed strange temporal anomalies. In these trials, two sets of mirrors were stationed thousands of kilometers apart. Researchers used a transmitting mirror to send one of 77 symbols derived from various cultures, and volunteers, approximately 5,000 participants from 12 countries, attempted to receive these symbols while sealed in a receiving mirror. They cleared their minds and focused on perceiving any symbols or impressions that might emerge. A third of the transmitted symbols appeared simultaneously, another third with delays of three to seven hours, and the final third arrived hours before they were sent, challenging the conventional understanding of cause and effect. Perhaps the most astonishing discovery came from symbols spontaneously manifesting inside the mirror spaces. Over six months, more than 1,200 symbols appeared, witnessed independently by multiple observers. Experts later matched 80% of these symbols to artifacts from ancient civilizations, including cave paintings and prehistoric tools. Though mainstream science largely dismissed the experiments as pseudoscience, the findings remain a subject of fascination in some circles. For the participants, the experiences were transformative, leaving them with lingering insights and a sense of connection to something vast and unexplainable. Red Mercury In the late 1980s, rumors of a mysterious blood-red experimental substance from the Soviet Union began to circulate in the dark alleys of the global black market. Known as Red Mercury, it was said to be a nuclear miracle, capable of creating portable nuclear bombs, advancing missile technology, and even granting stealth aircraft their invisibility. Though no one could agree on what Red Mercury actually was, a powder, a liquid, or a gas, prices soared, with kilograms fetching hundreds of thousands of dollars. As the Soviet Union descended into chaos in the early 1990s, the legend of Red Mercury only grew with the perfect storm of post-Soviet desperation and Cold War paranoia. Rumors claimed it was created in secret Soviet labs, a powerful byproduct of nuclear experiments. Sellers flaunted brick-red powders and liquid blobs and labeled canisters, promising unparalleled destruction to their buyers, often rogue states with grand military ambitions. Some claimed it was merely a code name for something else, nuclear materials smuggled out of collapsing Soviet facilities desperate for cash. In reality, Red Mercury was likely an elaborate hoax, a scam exploiting the global appetite for power and secrecy. Conmen peddle everything from dyed mercury oxide to harmless metallic compounds, 
adding radioactive symbols to packaging for dramatic effect. In one case, a sample labeled as red mercury turned out to be nothing more than industrial-grade paint. Yet the myth persisted, promoted by sensationalist media reports and the greed of those who believed they were buying world-shaking power. The scheme reached its peak in Russia during the tumultuous transition from the Soviet Union to an independent state. Criminals forged lucrative deals under the guise of exporting red mercury to fund food imports during the nation's economic collapse. Even government agencies were implicated. A commission chaired by then St. Petersburg bureaucrat Vladimir Putin issued export quotas for substances marketed as red mercury. The food shipments never arrived, and millions vanished into shadowy accounts. Meanwhile, the myth spread beyond Russia. In Saudi Arabia, tales of red mercury hidden in vintage sewing machines sparked a buying frenzy. In southern Africa, scavengers dismantled unexploded ordnance, believing they could extract the substance. In 1991, Czechoslovakian authorities tore apart an airport, chasing reports of a shipment containing 60 kilograms of red mercury. They found nothing. By 1992, a Russian commission officially declared it a hoax, calling it, quote, the last great swindle of the 20th century. Even after decades of debunking, rumors persist. In 2019, four men were arrested in Kyiv for trying to sell two liters of red mercury for $263,000. Nina Kulagina. It begins with a frog's heart, pulsing in a clear solution, its tiny beats wired to electrodes in a sterile Leningrad laboratory. On March 10, 1970, Nina Kulagina, a housewife and former Red Army tank crew member, sat motionless before it. Her face twisted with concentration as Soviet scientists recorded every moment. Over seven minutes, Gulagina's heart rate surged, her breathing shallow. Then the frog's heart abruptly stopped. According to those present, she had killed it using only her mind. Gulagina's abilities weren't mere parlor tricks to the Soviet government. They were potential weapons. At the height of the Cold War, both the USSR and the United States raced to unlock the mysteries of extrasensory perception, or ESP. For the Soviets, who had banned mysticism as anti-Marxist, psychic research was reframed in scientific terms. Psychokinesis became non-ionizing human emissions. Telepathy became biological systems transmission. What had once been the occult now promised strategic advantage. The frog experiment wasn't Kalagina's only alleged feat. Footage from Soviet archives shows her moving matchsticks under a glass dome and separating egg yolks from whites in water without touching them, under what the authorities describe as controlled conditions. These experiments, analyzed by dozens of scientists, two reportedly Nobel laureates, were positioned as evidence of untapped human potential. One of her most chilling demonstrations involved altering the heart rate of a skeptical physician. With both hooked to EKG machines, Kulagina allegedly accelerated his heartbeat to a dangerous level before the experiment was abruptly halted. Video footage made its way to the U.S. Defense Department, raising fears that the Soviets might develop psychic weaponry capable of killing or manipulating from afar. Investigation into what they call the Soviet psychoenergetic threat would lead to the U.S.'s own experiments in ESP, including the CIA's infamous Stargate project. However, skeptics had plenty to say. Magicians and investigators pointed out the ease with which Kalagana's feats could be faked using concealed magnets, threads, or sleight of hand. The long setup times and loosely controlled environments of her demonstrations only fueled accusations of fraud. Soviet journalist Vladimir Lvov accused her of using magnets, and even Soviet publications like Pravda denounced her as a charlatan. She sued for defamation in 1987, winning a partial victory, with the court noting no direct evidence of fraud. Whether Kalagana was a genuine psychic or a Cold War propagandist remains unresolved. The Moscow Signal In the gray haze of a Moscow winter, 
The U.S. Embassy stood as a modern fortress against the Soviet skyline. But inside its walls, something invisible hummed. A microwave signal, undetectable to the senses, yet powerful enough to draw the concern of American intelligence. First detected in 1953, the so-called Moscow signal would haunt diplomatic staff for decades, shrouded in secrecy and controversy. What was its purpose, and at what cost did its mystery come? The microwave beams emanated from a nearby apartment building, aimed precisely at the embassy's east side. Though too weak to cause immediate harm, the signal was a hundred times more powerful than Soviet safety standards allowed. At first, the U.S. downplayed the threat, shielding parts of the embassy but withholding details from staff. Only in 1976 were employees informed when pregnant women were quietly evacuated, a precaution that hinted at deeper concerns. Over the years, the embassy seemingly became an unwitting experiment. Diplomatic staff worked under the beam for hours daily, with some later reporting elevated white blood cell counts and unusual cancers. Walter Stossel, the U.S. ambassador in the 1970s, suffered symptoms so severe, bleeding from his eyes, chronic illness, that even Henry Kissinger privately linked his condition to the radiation. Stossel died of leukemia, but official studies failed to confirm the definitive link between the signal and the health crises of embassy personnel. The purpose of the Moscow signal remains speculative. Declassified documents suggest it may have activated hidden listening devices embedded in the embassy, an evolution of earlier Soviet espionage tactics. The infamous Great Seal Bug, discovered in 1952, used radio waves to power an undetectable microphone within the ambassador's residence. The timing of the signal's emergence, shortly after this bug's exposure, supports this theory. Others speculated it was a form of electronic jamming, or even an experimental weapon to disrupt health and cognition. Despite repeated protests, the Soviet Union denied any wrongdoing. When President Gerald Ford confronted Leonid Brezhnev in the 1970s, the Soviet leader dismissed the radiation as of industrial origin and ridiculed American concerns. The beam continued sporadically until the late 1980s, making it one of the longest-running covert operations of the Cold War. Today, the Moscow signal parallels the modern-day Havana Syndrome, a mysterious condition affecting U.S. diplomats worldwide. Both cases highlight the shadowy overlap of science, espionage, and geopolitics. Super Deep Borehole In the far reaches of Russia's Kola Peninsula, amidst snow-draped forests and arctic winds, a rusting metal cap lies bolted into the earth. Beneath the unassuming seal lies the Kola Superdeep Borehole, the deepest man-made hole on Earth. Descending more than 40,000 feet, deeper than Mount Everest is tall, it is a portal not to another world, but to the uncharted depths of our own. But some still say it's the gateway to hell. Drilled during the Cold War, the Kola Superdeep Borehole was the USSR's answer to the United States Project Mohole, a race to explore the Earth's crust. Starting in 1970, Soviet scientists hoped to reach 9.3 miles into the planet, uncovering secrets buried for billions of years. The goal wasn't oil or riches, but raw scientific discovery. What lies beneath our feet? By 1989, the borehole reached a record-breaking depth of 7.6 miles. Yet the further they drilled, the stranger the findings. Temperatures spiked to 356 degrees Fahrenheit, far hotter than expected, turning rock into plastic-like sludge. Hydrogen gas seeped from the depths, and to their astonishment, tiny fossilized plankton were found over four miles down, preserved in rock nearly two billion years old. Initially equipped with a Uralmesh 4E rig designed for oil wells, the project later utilized a purpose-built rig capable of withstanding extreme conditions. Despite these advancements, the intense heat and rock deformation at depth continually stalled progress, forcing the team to adapt their techniques to maintain vertical alignment and prevent drill bit failures. The collapse of the Soviet Union cut the project short in 1995. The site, abandoned and decaying, is now a curiosity for adventurous tourists. Not long after the drilling stopped, 
stories of the well to hell began circulating. According to an urban legend, Soviet scientists lowered a microphone into the borehole's depths and recorded the tortured screams of people. These tales, amplified by tabloid sensationalism and the Trinity Broadcasting Network, were later debunked as an audio hoax, likely sourced from a horror movie soundtrack. Still, some scientists speculate that high-pressure water escaping from the crust may have indeed created haunting, otherworldly sounds. For many, the truth and legend remain intertwined. The Kola project unraveled not from lack of ambition, but from the immense technical and financial challenges of drilling so deep. Other nations, including Germany and the US, attempted similar feats, but none surpassed Kola's depth. Today, scientists dream of drilling deeper, eyeing Earth's mantle as the next frontier. Advanced technology, like Japan's Shikyu drill ship, may one day succeed or Kola fell short. Which of these experiments is still hiding the darkest secrets? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.